Okay, I think we all know where Sicily uh, uh, is, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, also Lipari, which is just north. And just to move along here, uh, I'm going to give a brief uh, history about Mediterranean obsidian uh, studies, focusing then specifically on Lipari, uh, which if you didn't already know, actually has multiple geological sources talk about the application of this to many archaeological samples, uh, uh, and in a couple of minutes perhaps, talk about how to integrate this information with what we uh, otherwise have. Obsidian has been found literally at a thousand archaeological sites in the central Mediterranean, and as you probably also know, there are multiple obsidian sources. So it's a very basic question uh, whether they're coming uh, from Lipari, Palmarola, Pantelleria, uh, or from Sardinia. Some of this, of course, has to do with the simple location, how far uh, over water uh, the transport uh, uh, in involved and such things. Uh, I'm going to focus specifically on obsidian here, but we have to consider that this is part of the Neolithic package. Prior to the Neolithic, obsidian was not used in the Western Mediterranean, and as soon as we had the agriculture, pottery, uh, and other kinds of things, the obsidian use uh, uh, be began and very quickly uh, was spread over great territories. The study of obsidian and identifying where it came from started with work uh, by Colin Renfrew and colleagues, uh, and by the 1970s had come up with a general kind of distribution pattern with the obsidian from Lipari uh, dominating what you would find in the southern half of Italy, Sicily, uh, and elsewhere, but this was based on really very small numbers uh, of, of artifacts uh, and uh, also limited contexts from which that small number came. Starting in the uh, 1980, uh, sorry, not in 1980, 2000, <laughs> when was it? I forget now. Uh, 2000 uh, uh, did a detailed study of the, ge the geology of Lipari. Uh, anybody who goes there today, you can walk on the beach uh, and find plenty of obsidian, but a lot of this comes from more recent volcanic activity just about 1,300 years ago, and obviously those were not available uh, in prehistoric times. Uh, and so collecting lots of material from different localities, conducting different kinds of analyses on there to go and distinguish them. Uh, today, I do this with a portable, non-destructive machine, which is great uh, for dealing with artifacts in many museums uh, around Italy, Malta, uh, and, and elsewhere, and I'm not going to get into the details on this uh, here, uh, but just to show you that we can go and easily distinguish uh, between Lipari, Palmarola, Pantelleria, Milos in the Aegean, Carpathian sources, uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, and just on Lipari itself, we can distinguish between Monteguardia, uh, which fortunately or unfortunately does not have large enough pieces of obsidian to make stone tools, so we can ignore that uh, a subsource by itself. Uh, but there's clearly a distinction between Canetto Dentro and Gabalato Gorge, and even two different parts of Gabalato Gorge. Is this significant when we go and interpret archaeological samples? Uh, we will see. Uh, uh, here we're uh, fo focused in, and you can see on the southern end where Canetto Dentro is, a relatively small outcrop that has the obsidian, whereas on the northern part, Gabalato Gorge, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of the obsidian relatively available, but a lot of this has also been disturbed and covered over uh, by the more recent volcanic activity. So the actual locations where ancient people were collecting the material uh, is uh, still a big question. With the help of uh, uh, colleagues uh, and the permission from many superintendenzas and, and so on, we have gone and uh, looked at many, many uh, artifacts and not just taking random pieces, uh, but uh, recording what uh, uh, type of lithics, what technology are we looking at, arrowheads, blades, scrapers, et cetera, et cetera, debitage, and so on. Uh, and at this point have uh, done this literally uh, on more than 10,000 artifacts uh, in Sicily and elsewhere in the central Mediterranean. Uh, and just focusing, starting off in the Sicily area, I think you know uh, where Malta is to the south. We've already heard about Malta. Uh, I'm going to compare this uh, with the island of Ustica. Many of you may not know that, but it's roughly the same distance uh, from Sicily, but north of Palermo rather than on the southern side like uh, Malta is. 
based on the overall analyses that have been done, uh, we can identify obsidian coming from Lipari, more or less throughout Italy, into southern France, uh, Croatia, uh, and some uh, even in North Africa as well. Uh, but the quantity and the specific time periods involved uh, is really important, as well as what other sources of obsidian are competing with the Lipari obsidian in some of these locations. For Sicily, uh, uh, about 50 different sites have analyzed a significant number uh, of artifacts in the east, eastern part of Sicily, western part of Sicily, and so on. And going to not show you the talk about detailed numbers and things here, but in addition to determining the sources, uh, looking at whether these are cores, uh, which would indicate the pre-preparation closer to the source and the transport of those cores then for the preparation of artifacts on a local basis, uh, as well as uh, whether there has been debitage or other waste uh, being found at any of these sites. That depends largely on whether these are uh, surface deposits, whether they have been excavated, and also on the quality of the excavation when that was done and so on. Uh, as far as non-Lipari obsidian, in Sicily, mostly in the western part, but uh, some other examples, we're competing with the obsidian from Pantelleria. Some of this has to do simply with the distance uh, between the site and these different sources, but there's also differences in color and physical properties between Pantelleria and Lipari obsidian, uh, and other reasons uh, that the access uh, uh, would have affected things. Pantelleria does not seem to have been occupied, uh, that is, no sites have been identified there prior uh, to the early Copper Age, uh, but we definitely have the use of Pantelleria obsidian starting in the early Neolithic. And just to zoom in here uh, and look at the different colors, which represent different percentages of Pantelleria obsidian, uh, you can see uh, that, yes, on the island of Pantelleria, at all of the sites there, it's 100%. Uh, and the site of Zembra, north of uh, Tunisia as well. Uh, but it's significant in the sense of between 30 and 80% and at a number of uh, sites, like uh, Pacheco Grotta Majorana on the west side of uh, Sicily. Uh, and surprisingly enough, at the inland site of Casalicchio, uh, uh, whereas most of the coastal sites in between Pantelleria and, and western Sicily uh, have much less uh, uh, of the Pantellerian obsidian in that greenish kind of color. Uh, and there's many sites on the eastern side of Sicily that have no Pantelleria obsidian at all. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Ustica up there in the north, uh, which has a fair amount uh, of obsidian coming from Pantelleria uh, as well. Uh, and well, here's Ustica. This is a small little island, just several square kilometers, uh, uh, and has no fresh water source, at least today. Uh, but nevertheless, more than six different archaeological sites have been identified on that tiny island going back to the early Neolithic. And so I've gone back, uh, gone there and analyzed uh, uh, all, all of these artifacts, which by the way are quite plentiful in number. So there was clearly regular transport to this remote uh, small little island. In any case, overall, uh, it's uh, dominated uh, by Lipari uh, obsidian, small amount relatively, uh, uh, coming from Pantelleria. Uh, and this is dis different from the nearest archaeological site in mainland Sicily near Palermo at the Grotta del Uzzo. Uh, and we are, I argue uh, that this has something to do with the transport of the Lipari obsidian uh, going more likely, more or less due west. Uh, from uh, Lipari to Ustica and not traveling to the north coast of Sicily along the coast and up there, because if that were the case, you would expect to have similar percentages at Grotta del Uzzo and others uh, there. And this says something, uh, along with the other obsidian studies that I have done, uh, about uh, the frequency, regularity, and so on of open water transport starting in the early Neolithic time period. Let's go down uh, to Malta uh, and Gozo again, uh, and uh, looking at two different sites in particular, Scorba on Malta and the Brockdorf Circle on Gozo. And they have totally different percentages or usage of the obsidian from Lipari and Pantelleria. Uh, there are also differences in the context, that is the Brockdorf Circle is a burial uh, complex, whereas Scorba is more of a residential and ritual uh, location. Uh, I'm not gonna explain all the pictures 
pictures and stuff here. You've seen that uh, stuff before. Uh, but what we have on Scorba on the mainland is it's mostly coming from Lipari, which is in some ways no surprise. Uh, uh, but on, at Brocktorf, it's the total other direction. Uh, most of it, vast majority of it, is coming from Pantelleria. How can this be so different between two islands that are just several kilometers apart uh, from each other? Uh, and this tells us something about the specific selection of obsidian uh, based on a variety of, of, of geological, physical uh, principles, uh, but uh, perhaps other things uh, as well. The color meaning something uh, that we uh, it would be very difficult to explain. Um, uh, heading uh, uh, to some other places in the limited time that I have here, uh, uh, getting out of Sicily into the southern half of, of Italy, the vast majority, again, is still coming uh, from uh, Lipari, but you're also getting small amounts coming from other sources, Palmarola, uh, and even from Sardinia, making its way. There's one piece of Sardinian obsidian found in, Sil in Sicily, uh, and several pieces uh, found in Calabria uh, and elsewhere, but um, focusing more on the Lipari obsidian here at the site of Poggia Olivastro, a middle Neolithic site in central Italy. Lipari obsidian is one-third uh, of what's being found there, and uh, a whole lot of it coming from Palmarola, which is fairly close uh, uh, there as well. Head even further north, uh, the site of Pescale, uh, uh, and find that the Lipari obsidian uh, is even less. We're getting further away, so that's you know a basic logical kinds of thing, uh, and uh, mostly coming from Sardinia. Uh, but even a little bit north of that, four sites all around Parma have very similar percentages at each of those four, and they are all dominated by the Lipari obsidian again. So, and we're talking here about inland sites, uh, and so how we go and interpret this is really the big question here. Uh, uh, and Lipari, of course, is an island, so there had to have been some uh, transport from there uh, to the coast of Italy at some point, uh, and then overland, probably not by the people who were uh, in charge of the boat, uh, uh, bringing it inland to different places. Uh, and. Uh, how we can go and explain the vast difference between Pescale and these Parma uh, uh, sites. Uh, some of this may have to do with slight differences in the time period that is represented here. In particular, it seems that the Lipari obsidian tends to be more dominant in the earlier Neolithic period, whereas the Sardinian obsidian kind of takes over in the middle and late Neolithic time period at these kinds of distances. In southern France, also in the middle Neolithic, Sardinian and obsidian dominates uh, uh, what has been found there at a number of different archaeological sites. Uh, one of the differences, though, in, in southern France is most of the Sardinian obsidian comes from one particular outcrop, uh, 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 and, and that is different than what we find in the northern part of Italy. So, from doing all of these analyses, we can go and draw these straight lines uh, to those thousands of archaeological sites and say this is where the obsidian is coming from. Of course, the straight lines uh, is not how it got there, and this doesn't say anything here. This is putting together uh, the different time periods uh, and quantities and so on. Uh, but Lipari obsidian clearly uh, spread the greatest distances of all of the obsidians in, in central Mediterranean uh, uh, in, and also in quantity as well. What are the variables that are involved here? Transport over land as well as the sea, how frequently uh, uh, this transport was going on, would you be riding in Neolithic kinds of boats in the wintertime, these kinds of issues, uh, what kind of socioeconomic status do we have in the early Neolithic compared to the later Neolithic. I think we're talking about uh, some kinds of complexity here and control over the actual original geological sources where the production of cores and then the transport of the cores uh, further away was likely going on. Uh, what was the obsidian actually being used for? In Sicily and nearby places where the obsidian uh, was 90% or more of the total lithic assemblage, it was being used on everything. But farther and farther away, a lot of other stone material was being used as well. And you get very far away where the Lipari obsidian or any kind of obsidian is a small percentage, it's more likely to be used for very special kinds uh, of uh, 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 uses. 
So lots of questions still remain on this, but thank you very much.